Ryan Litzy. The uh, tape work too, it stops like before it goes in. What's up everybody? Greetings fellow humans. So today we are going to hone the engine and we're going to clean the deck completely. That way it's nice and ready for the heads and the head gasket. Yeah, right now we're going to do basically the final clean and uh, then it should pretty much be a finished block. There'll be a few things to do but you'll see that when it comes. Without any further ado, let's begin. All right, so the hone we're gonna use today is this hone. It's just like a standard hone you can get at your auto parts store. Um, we got this one at AutoZone, and it was about, actually we got it at O'Reilly's. No, we got it at AutoZone. Okay, yeah, AutoZone, and it was about 55 bucks. Um, no, it wasn't. That was no, it wasn't, yeah, the paint. that's that, right. This was like that's right. 32, was like, I think. Yeah, this was like 32 bucks, and then with the paint and the primary, it came out to like 55 bucks, so. We'll have to add that to our deductions from the 5,000 budget list so now we're up to 255 out of $5,000 north and uh, we're going to be spinning this home with this black and decker drill um, it's tough drill it'll do job just fine and uh, so next step is to oil the crap out of everything um, we're gonna use PB blaster they make a, a special cutting oil for this exact job but we'll be okay so let's get to it okay so I just remembered our the transformer down the street just blew up. It was so, a wicked gnarly noise. Yeah, and it'd be nice to smell the burning right now. Yeah. We have no power, so we can't currently hone the engine. So in the meantime, we are just going to start on the deck, since that's good old manual labor. So that's, how you, that's how you build the, the mechanic muscles. That looks pretty good though. We got a cross hatch, that's for sure. I'm thinking going faster, like, like up and down, in and out faster. And why do you think that? Just because I'm trying to achieve a 45 degree angle on the uh, cross hatching because it's gonna hold the oil the best when the engine is breaking in and seating the rings, um, which is gonna be good. It's gonna help the ring seat. That's why we're honing it in the first place. Uh, coming up and down 20 times. That's 20, isn't it? Yep. You want to get the other side? Yeah. Okay. I want to buy another one. <laughs> but uh, it seems to be doing what we need, so that's good. As long as our rings seat up, we, we, it's really only going to take a little bit for that to happen. It's my first time, so go easy on me in the comments, okay? Oh, it's important to mention real quick. You got any imperfections in the in the bores, like gouges and stuff like that? Don't try to take it out with a hone. All you're trying to do is set up a surface that the piston rings will seat up on nicely. It's not gonna bore it or anything. No, you're not gonna take out the scoring. Don't try to take out the scoring. You're gonna just okay. jack up the block if you take it out that far. Cracked. It was already cracked. I cracked it on the very first pass. Two of them. Yeah, like that. On two of them. Yeah, we got two left to go. Let's make it happen, Captain. Alright, so here's how it looks after the hone. It's a terrible shot because I'm trying to get the lighting just right, but it looks a lot better than it did when we got it, and that's the important part. Okay, they help seat the rings, and that's what we're going for. Day two. Yeah, and I think there's probably going to be a lot of stupid mistakes. I'm sure you guys will point them, point them out to us in the comments. Oh, yeah. But um, it's a learning experience, and we're doing it on our own stuff. Instead of on somebody else's stuff, which is the way it should be done. On your own stuff, not somebody else's. Yeah. Anyway. They, they so, don't like that. Yeah. So we're doing 
the learning on our own stuff. So if it is screwed up, so what? We learned, we can buy another set of heads, do it again the right way. Yeah, this is like a hundred dollar set of heads, worst case scenario, scrap them, start again. Big deal, right? Um, so without any more talking, let's get to work, guys. All right, what's going on tonight, guys? So we're gonna teach ourselves, ourselves how to port heads tonight. And you're gonna watch and learn along with us. Well, I don't know if it's gonna focus or not. So anyway, this is the first stage that we're gonna do. Um, go and tell them what this is. <laughs> All right, so we got a die grinder here and we got a long six inch double burr cutting wheel and uh, we're gonna port these heads with them. This is a first for me, it's a first for you, um, but this is a budget build, so this is a budget way to make power. All right, so when you're doing any sort of porting or cutting, with these kind of tools, you're going to want to use grinders grease, keep everything lubricated. And also it helps, as you see right here, prevent soft metal from sticking to the surface. So, get this. This is unusual because generally everything we've done on this channel, at least one of us has done it before. This is a new frontier for both of us. It was a little jumpy there at first, you saw that, but uh, after after just doing a little bit, just going around, just getting introduced to it, I feel, I was feeling pretty good there. I started going a little deeper and following contours that I saw. Um, I, I'm, I'm excited, I feel really good about this. I think this is gonna be a fun learning process. Okay, for consistency, we're using these uh, dial calipers to kind of just measure them out and see how close they all are to each other. And so far, they're actually pretty, pretty good. This one needs to be a little bit bigger, but uh, they're pretty consistent. These three are spot on almost. Um, this one here, it's coming out a little, a little smaller. Okay, so there you have it. We just measured it out to give us an idea of just how close or how far off they are. and. Three out of the four are really close. Um, one is really far off. And then there's one that's a bit larger, but it's still closer than the one that's really far off, if that makes sense. So It's almost acceptable. Yeah. So basically, we're going to widen this one out. We're going to widen the first one out considerably. And then we're going to slightly widen the other two to match the largest one. And That sounds like the plan. Yeah, that's it. This tool you gotta put a lot more pressure down than you did with the uh, cutting bits. This pretty much just knocked out chunks of aluminum like nothing. It's just about having a steady hand. Where this, you really kinda gotta force it into where you want it to take out metal. All right, so just a quick update for you guys. So we just got done um, pouring one of the heads. Now. What you already saw before was we just did a light early stage um, pass on it and we just we didn't even go in very far we just got basically got our feet wet um, now we have gone all the way through on one side on one head on the exhaust ports and we are keeping the measurements between the ports so we can keep everything as consistent as possible um, and now we're going to go through on the next head and then we're going to uh, clean everything up a bit we've used both uh, this bit here, this is going to be the cutting one. And then we've used the sanding wheel uh, that's already on the drum right here. And that's been helping us clean everything up. So, it's going pretty good. It's cool. And we'll take a look at that in a second. Now that the first one's done, I'm going to come through on try and finish up this next one with our predetermined measured values that we've been taking off the first head. And uh, I'm thinking it's going to look pretty good. So, let's get to it. Alright, so if y'all can see this, 
this is the first head that we did previously. Uh, we haven't touched this one yet with, with the full through pass, the final pass. Um, and so you can see, this is how far we went in. Not very far at all. And then this is all the stock casting in here, all the dark spots. As you can see, we haven't touched the floor yet. We're gonna clean that up at the very end. Um, right now, we're just trying to take out metal where we need to take out metal. This is the head over here. It's a little bit dark, but you can still see that it's smooth, polished all the way through, but we'll get better shots later. All right, just a quick update for you guys. So we got done porting basically the exhaust side, well, the exhaust ports. Now we're going to port the other side of the exhaust ports. Um, this is more so where the valves go. Right in here, we're gonna be taking this guy down, this hump. That's where the valve stem actually sticks out when the valve goes. Uh, we're, gonna be taking, we're gonna be grinding this hump down quite a good bit more. I just got done doing the exhaust ports. This time I was doing the, the valve stem guides and we were uh, porting those down. You want those to look close to a bullet. That way it's nice and it's aerodynamic, flows well. I couldn't have asked them to come out any better. They're about what I expected, never done it before, so kind of guessing at what it should look like. But uh, I mean, we've seen reference material and it looks proper. I'm pretty happy with how it's coming along. Just goes to show you can do it. Well, it's all right. so, so Yeah, so far so good. Thanks for checking out this far. We're having a lot of fun. It's a learning experience, learning a ton and making a ton of progress on the engine on the 500 horsepower budget build, so. Ah, oh, it's moving along. All right, next scene. What's up? All right, so this is just another quick update. We just got done grinding down the humps that are in the intake side of the ports of the head, and we just wanted to give you an update on that. So we finished knocking down the humps. Now we're about to go and knock down the swirl ramp on the intake side, um, just to open up the chamber a lot and gain more power. Yeah, we'll walk you through that as we do it. And just some thoughts on the process. And like, like we said before, this is our first time porting heads. Um, so in the beginning, it was a little scary. Yeah. Um, but as time has progressed and as we've been handling the tool and the head themselves more often, um, we've gained more confidence and have gained a better understanding of how to use and angle the tool appropriately to get the kind of cut you want, where you want, and so on and so forth. So yeah. it's really coming along. We're learning a lot and finally getting a good understanding of just what it takes to port heads correctly. And these tools are pretty mega. Yeah, these tool, tools are, are a huge part of the job, but something else that I'm taking home from it is a light, steady hand goes a long way with this. So just be patient, take your time, keep your hand steady, and you'll be there. So. At this rate, I think we'll be done in a day or two, and that's not like working hard. No, and for it's you guys... It's coming along a lot quicker than I thought it would. Yeah, for you guys, it'll be like... So basically what we're going to do is we're going to knock down the swirl ramp right here and just try to match it to the other side so it's pretty symmetrical. That'll give us a lot more chamber space. Um, we'll probably widen it a little bit through here and uh, down through here and define the shape on this thing here. And uh, it should look pretty sick, and it should flow air like awesome. CFM. Okay, so this is after a couple passes with the grinding bit. And you can see what happened. We cut down the part of the casting that was here, the swirl ramp. Cut it down, made it more pronounced to match this side more and then went in and just widened out everything out and smoothed it out. We'll go back through and blend it all and perfect it with the actual sanding discs instead of the cutting bit. Here's the stock ones, you can see the difference. So you can see how it's got that big stump right there. It's kind of like a step down and then it goes in. And on this side, we ground that down so it's a smooth transition all the way down. All right, so that's gonna about wrap it up for this video, guys. Thanks so much for checking it out. Um, just a quick recap. So we've got the block honed. We've got the heads. The porting has begun. We're about 50% of the way through. 
Um, so that's really cool. And we also got some new parts in. That's awesome. So the project's moving along pretty nicely. I've been learning a lot more about the LS series engines and about porting yeah, just in general. Yeah, getting hands on with it. Yeah. Quick tally up, because we haven't been, well we have been, but we haven't been in the videos, keeping track of all the funds we've been spending on this build, since it's a budget build. The porting kit was about $60. The rods was $150. Spoon and paint, $55. So we are roughly about $500 into this right now, and it's going pretty good so far. I feel pretty good about it. So, it's a quick update. Thanks again for checking us out. Really yeah. appreciate it. Remember, give us a like if you like what you saw today. Uh, leave us a comment, and as always, please subscribe. That's right. Subscribe. Tell your friends. Follow this build. There's going to be more awesome videos coming out on a regular basis. We've got a lot more things to play. Simple Gen 4 rods. Gen 4, 5, 3, 5, 7, 6, 0 rods. These are the 6.1s. 6, 2 rods. Yeah, so these should be 6.1. We'll measure them here in a bit. But, uh, what did finally you spend here. on these? 150 bucks shipped. 150 bucks shipped, not bad. It was 139 and these, then $10 tax. Nice. These are good, dude. They do. They look great.